Hi guys. Um, I am going live with Karuna in our essential oil apothecary that we um, host every Wednesday. And I'm just gonna add her right now. Um, June. Where is this? Um, all right, here we go. I hadn't done that before, so I was just trying to navigate it. Hey, girl. Hey, it worked. Nice. <laughs> nice. I love it. Thanks for hosting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so today okay. we're talking bergamot. And um, do you want to get started or... Um, you can if you want to. Okay. Sometimes I like when you like, start this class because you get into like the science and <laughs> I've got all my notes in front of me. And now. you hold space for me to um, dig into the, the energetic, spiritual aspect. Of the energetics. Okay, I I can start if you want. Um. So I'm super excited to talk about this essential oil, bergamot here. Um, I've got it right here. I love it. I wish that you could all smell it and enjoy it because it is a really amazing oil. And as Molly was talking, I'm super into um, the science and medicinals of the oils, being an Ayurvedic health counselor and just lover of plant medicine and natural remedies. So um, the, let's just talk about the main properties of bergamot. So these I like to think of as little magic potions in a bottle. They're like science projects. So this um, works at the properties in here. Um, they're like science molecules. So it's on a molecular structure. This works as um, a sedative, a stomatic. So it's, it eases the stomach. It supports the stomach. It's neuroprotective, meaning that it protects the nerves. It's a karmative, which means that it calms us down. And it's used as an antidepressant, which I love because I... Um, have myself suffered a lot from personal depression over the course of my life. And this one, um, I, one of the reasons why I like to talk about it so much is because my friend and business partner, Dr. Daniel Daniel, is a PhD in psychology. And um, she did her research on how essential oils affect the brain and really highlighted the um the benefits of using bergamot. So how can we use it? <clears throat> Let's get real practical, right? We can use it in one of three ways. We can, um, when we're talking about um, affecting our mood, we the best way to use it is aromatically. So you can put it in a diffuser, you can put a drop in your hands and just start taking some breaths. Uh, you can also apply it topically to the soles of your feet, to the pulse points of your wrist, mm, neck, throat, <clears throat> um, the base of your brain stem. However, when you're applying it topically, especially now that we're in spring and we're gonna go into full on summer pretty soon, you really want to be mindful that you're not going to put it anywhere on your skin if you're going to go directly out in the sun for up to 12 hours because it can burn and stain your skin. So be really mindful of that, friends. <clears throat> and um, the chemical constituents that it's got in it that makes it have these properties is it's got D-lemonine in it, um, Linalil acetate, linalol, terpene, or um, 
and B pinene. So what does that mean? That means that <clears throat> they are going to move into the body, whether we use it through the nose, topically, or the third way is internally. Um, a lot of times when you see supplement facts on the back of doTERRA's bottle, you'll know that you can put that in some water or do a little shot um, and put it in some kind of drink, smoothie, whatever, and you can take that internally. And then that's how it can work on supporting the digestive system. Because remember, we said that it works to support the stomach. And it also is has carminative actions, which means that we can use it to relax cramps, muscles. I know that Molly can talk firsthand about how she, I know that she uses it in her massage therapy practice um, because it's really so soothing. So um, <clears throat> some of the other uses that are, um, we can apply bergamot to is psoriasis, which is surprise. I thought I found kind of surprising because psoriasis, I mean, um, bergamot is a citrus oil, even though when you initially smell it, you know, it, it's got citrus scents to it, but more so it, it almost smells like a, a floral, you know, it's warm and it's warm. What's that? It's a bit warm. It's very tart. Mm, yeah, it is. And so it's uplifting to the mood, but also really relaxing. So it's 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 a very unique oil because it can energetically pick you up and get you going, yet it's not going to prevent you from amping up your nervous system. You know, it's going to keep you alert yet relaxed so that's that's super amazing because being alert and relaxed that's exactly what we want we want to keep our nervous system in the parasympathetic the rest and digest so when we're using it on the skin for psoriasis remember you don't want to um, put it on when you're going out to the beach or in the sun um, even if you're you know going for a barbecue and you think you're going to be in the shade be you know wear a long sleeve shirt or something um, but you can dilute one or two drops uh, with a carrier oil and just put it right on the skin. And when we dilute essential oils, that helps to move the oils into the deeper layers of the skin over a longer period of time. <clears throat> and it also prevents building up any sensitivity to the oil too. So if especially if you're using oils repeatedly over you know over for um for chronic issues like psoriasis where um you may be using them multiple times a day so you definitely want to dilute them and we can also use it like we said for sadness for depression um <clears throat> appetite loss so if you have a hard time um, for whatever reason with your appetite and you just don't feel like eating and you end up losing a lot of weight and there's a lot of that reducing quality in your system, then um, Bergamo is a really great one for that. So I have, um, I've known people who are suffering from anorexia or have gone through chemo or radiation where they just don't want to eat and feel like they can't because they're nauseous. Um, this is a really great one, too. It's also good to support us if we're feeling motion sickness, when, we're mo when we have motion sickness. So um, you can use, you can blend it with lime and either spearmint or peppermint. And you can put that in a little spray in your little travel bag or in your purse as you're traveling around. Or you can make a little roller bottle. And again, you can put that on the pulse points of the neck the wrist, the base, the brainstem, and the soles of the feet, and that may help alleviate that feeling. Um, <clears throat> also, it's good for when we're letting go of bad habits, addictions. This is a really good one to just keep putting on the soles of your feet and diffusing. Um, if you've got acne, it's a really great one for the skin. 
so you can apply um you can just put it neat right on some little acne spots if you've got that or if you've got um, deeper issues then you can apply it to your toner your lotion um what a, um, a mask and that'll be really great because it it um let's see in my notes here <clears throat> Um, according to Ayurveda, it's going to reduce vata dosha and kapha dosha, and it's going to increase pitta dosha. So um, that means that if you've got um, <clears throat> excess wind or that earth energy in the body, you can use that to reduce it. And if you've got too much, if you don't have enough fire, you can use that to kind of spice up and uh, ignite the Agni in your system again. Um, it's also really great for insomnia. So if you're experiencing insomnia, there's a remedy that you can just put a drop underneath your tongue or in water and drink that. You can also add it to your diffuser at night with lavender or um, like cedar wood or vetiver. That's a really, those are really grounding and relaxing and that can help support a good night's rest. Um, also, it can increase your self-confidence and self-worth, which is nice. And you can apply, uh, you can just massage over the, the heart center and the, um, the solar plexus. This is where we um, carry our self-confidence and Molly's going to talk about the chakras in a little bit and how you can work energetically with essential oils in that way. Now, um, speaking of making little remedies, if you're experiencing a lot of stress right now, which I know a lot of people are, you can make a little remedy and you can add 10 drops of lavender, 10 drops of wild orange, uh, five drops of bergamot and five drops of doTERRA's grounding blend balance and you can put that in a 10 milliliter roller and fill the rest with the carrier oil and again just put that in your pocket your purse you can carry that around and anytime you're feeling stressed just roll it on your wrist smell it I like to put it on my heart center when I feel stressed and hopefully that will support you and it will trigger the nervous system because remember we said it protects the nerves so um, it's a really great one to have on hand when you're dealing with stressful situations. Um, and what, since we're talking recipes, if you're experiencing cramps, any kind of abdominal cramps, you can add nine drops of bergamot, three drops of lavender, four drops of Roman chamomile, and two drops of marjoram. And you can blend that into a cream or a carrier oil, and you can just use that whenever you, um, when you're feeling like you're experiencing any kind of abdominal cramps, and that will help to support that soothing feeling. <clears throat> so, when we're classifying bergamot um, in the notes for the evaporation rates. It's a top middle note, and usually citrus oils are. So just so you know, this is harvested from uh, doTERRA harvest there, bergamot um, from Italy. And um, they are using, um, let's see, the part of they're using the fresh fruit. So when we're talking about citrus fruits, they're cold pressed, and they're normally top notes top or middle notes and what does that mean it means that as soon as you open the bottle and you're putting this on your skin and you're putting it on neat so i'm just going to put on the soles of my feet because i know i'm going to go outside in the sun it's so beautiful today got to get out there um so when you put it on topically on your skin neat it's going to have a really quick evaporation rate which is one of the reasons why it's best to dilute the oils because it lasts longer and it moves more slowly into your skin so it's, it's absorbed over a longer period of time 
Okay. Um, let's see. What else can we say? It's um, its chemical family is really dominant in the monoterpenes. The mono terphenols or phenols and the esters <clears throat> so that means that when we're talking about it energetically and when we're talking about self-acceptance and self-worth this really help can relieve feelings of despair self-judgment and like we said low self-esteem so it can support us to really increase our self-love and a lot of times when we look deep down within us and, and really recognize our um, self-limiting beliefs, a lot of times it, um, it, it comes up with just being worthy. Am I worthy? So if, you're, if you have a hard time doing things for yourself or accepting compliments or... Um, accepting help from other people. Uh, this is a really great oil to work with to help you receive love because a part of love and loving and being a loving person is it's a reciprocal relationship. It's not one-sided, right? And how do we feel when it's one-sided? It doesn't feel so good, does it? I mean, maybe for a little bit it can feel okay, but over time... If you're ending up being the one in the relationship that's giving more and more and more and the other person's just taking, that is very depleting because it's not balanced. Or vice versa, if your partner is always giving to you and you're always taking, then um, there is a, an imbalance there. So we need to look at self-love and really practice, which is one of the things I love about Ayurveda because it just teaches us all about ourself and how to nurture and support ourselves and really love ourselves, which is, I think, so needed in our society because um, there's so much going on with people internally. There's so much inner turmoil and suffering. And one of the ways that we can really alleviate that is by loving ourselves more and being able to receive love from others. So my spiritual teacher, Shubhaji, would always say when we deny others, um, when they offer to help, it's like denying them their opportunity to give. And when she said that to me, it was one of the most profound things I'd ever heard because who wants to block someone else's giving? Because when you give to others, how amazing do you feel, right? I know that if... Um, you know, if I feel sad or something, I, it's really good to take action and start doing something for others. And it takes us out of our small self. And when we're looking at this from a spiritual practice and look, reading spiritual texts, it's written with a small S. But when we're talking about our higher self, our spiritual self, merging back into divine consciousness, into uh, God or whatever you want to call it, um, it's described with a capital S and it's a reminder that we are the creation of divine essence. So when we don't allow ourselves or others to love us, it's like we're blocking that energy and it's like saying that we and our divine selves is not worthy and that is total BS and it's a lie that the mind, I don't know what it is about being human. It's like we come back into this world with amnesia and we forget who we truly are. So this oil can, it kind of helps us spiritually to remove that veil and really work with that um, aspect of self-worth, which I think is so, so important. Um, okay, so... It also has a cleansing effect and it helps to remove stagnation, which is one of the reasons why it's going to reduce kapha. And what's kapha dosha? They're like the ultimate couch potatoes. They are like king and queen relaxers. And so they need to reduce that sense of stagnation. And so we're coming out of early spring and we're in later spring. So early spring, what's happening? The snows are melting everything is getting wet and it's making mud and slush and that's very kapha energy 
now we're moving into the spring. We're moving into a more sense of vitality and into summer, which is pitta. So um, that if, if one is feeling stagnant, if you've got excess kapha in your constitution um, right now in your current state, which is called your vakruti, Bergamo is going to be that one to kind of help you uh, kind of like scrub off the dust, you know, like when we, op- when we open up all our windows and we're doing a spring cleaning, we're doing that because everything's been closed down in the winter. You know, we're lighting fires if we have a home fire or, you know, um, we've got that home hearth and it just, when everything's closed, it's bringing, it, it kind of keeps all that layer of dust. So let's, we're, we're, this is the time now in the spring to really energetically freshen things up and bring that vitality back to us and let go of these limiting beliefs because sometimes the darkness too can really affect people's moods. I know that me personally, like when it's dark and for extended periods of, of time, clue, um, we, you know, and then when we see the light, people's moods, we just become illuminated from within and um, citrus oils like bergamot, it's like sunshine in a bottle and it just brings that illumination from the inside out in our energy and of our, and our vitality are ojas and tejas so it's really exciting about that um i think anyway (laughs) um it also because of core beliefs of being bad or unlovable or not good enough we may hide behind a facade of cheerfulness i know i used to do that i know a ton of people wear that mask of joy and then at home they're totally broken or when they go MIA and you don't see your friends for a while, why are they hiding, you know? Where have you been for a while? And then they'll tell you, like, oh, my God, I've just been in, like, the dark nights of the soul and I couldn't even come out. But that's when we really need each other, right? So um, reaching out to your, like, having at least one person to support you and using aromatherapy also to retrain the brain is super helpful, Um, And we also use it to reignite our optimism, our confidence in the self, and impart true self-acceptance. So Bergamot teaches us to let go of self-judgment. It's like the soul-killing thing is when your mind is like, no, 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 no
nociceptive activity. I don't think I pronounced that right. I'm not very good at these big, long science words. But anyway, basically, it just reduces the sensation of pain because of the linolol and the linolol acetate in there. <clears throat> so that's where it has the neuroprotection qualities. And so there's been studies done where it has the potential to uh, reduce pain in, um, in different kinds of um, treatments. It's also anti-inflammatory, and many of our health issues are stemmed from inflammation in the body. So um, this has anti-inflammatory qualities in it because of the pres presence of um, linolol, linolol and D-limonene. It's also antibacterial and has been used for centuries in folk medicine to treat various infections. Um, also, like we said, it's been used as an antidepressant in conjunction with Lang Lang, lavender, and bergamot, which reduces um, psychological stress responses and the serum cortisol levels and reduce blood pressure levels of patients with essential hypertension. So you can do um, a nice, even a hand massage for someone who's got hypertension or feeling stressed if, um, or if they're going through cancer. Um, it's antifungal, which means that it protects against funguses, especially funguses that grow on the skin in nails. So have you ever seen those people where their nails are super, I'm just going to say it, super nasty and like really messed up i mean i don't know how else to say it they're like flaking yeah. they're cracking yeah. they're totally disformed maybe they don't have a nail at all and that's from a fungus and i had a friend who was studying to be a physician physician's assistant and he had it really bad and i was like what is the deal with that and what are you doing for it and we were good friends, so I could talk to him like that. <laughs> and um, he was saying that, you know, it's a fungus. He knew the prescription medicine that he could take to get rid of it. However, he said that he would rather have an ugly big toe than to mess up his liver so bad. So I was like, why don't you try this? <laughs> And Melaleuca is also really a great one for antibacterial, antifungal, and you can just make a little mixture. And what I did is I made a blend of those two, and coconut oil is also known to be antibacterial. So you get all these oils that have these antibacterial, antifungal qualities, and you make a home remedy. You make it in a little uh, roller bottle or a spray, and you give it to your friends and they roll it on their nails, spray it on their toes. And then eventually, because sometimes, especially like that, nails take a really long time to grow. Over time, it kills the fungus and the bacteria and the nail will begin to grow back again really beautifully as it once was and should. So really great tip, right? Also, you can use bergamot and lemongrass or any really any kind of citrus oils to remove your nail polish. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, okay, it's antispasmodic because of the linolol acetate in there, which can reduce uh, relaxation of smooth muscle and has a vasorelaxant effect, which means that it's relaxing the vascular system as well, and that means the heart. Uh, and then it's a cognitive, so the ability to support digestion and prevent gas. And this effect is related to its antispasmodic activity, which is due in part to the linolol acetate. And then it has a cooling effect, so in folk medicine, bergamot, is used as a typical antiseptic wound healing, like I mentioned earlier. 
um, for superficial pain and itching. And even though it doesn't have a typical citrus aroma, it's a sharp top note that gives an initial citrus impact, which is the D-limonene uh, or limonene, um, before a softer, sweeter middle, the sweeter middle notes emerge. So then after a while, you can begin to smell a, the lemony facet, which is more um, neroli-like. And then it's also got peppery nuances and hints of herbs. So it's got an herbaceous scent to it. And also it's got a lavender-like element and it's similar in the chemical composition to lavender in the way that it's got the linalool acetate and the linalool in it. Um, so from, let's see, so the clinical applications for digest, digestive comfort, emotional health, for respiratory health because of the antispasmatic actions, it can be helpful in calming coughing um, or respiratory infections, which is good, right? We want to keep our respiratory system super healthy now, especially with that which won't be named. <laughs> so sick of hearing it. Um, but we want to be smart and healthy. So we want to keep our lungs super healthy. Um, so you can make a remedy and add juniper, which reduces congestion as well. And you can use cardamom, which is also an expectorant, as well as eucalyptus. So you can make your own respiratory blend. And again, you can add um, drops to either um, a 10 milliliter roller bottle or a spray. And you can either roll that or spray yourself if you're having respiratory issues. Or, you know, just like, for example, I was working outside this morning in the yard and it's super dry and dusty here in Bend, Oregon, and we're in spring, and the, everything is in bloom, and the juniper trees are, like, barfing pollen everywhere. I mean, you can just see this white, I mean, um, this yellow coating of pollen everywhere, and when I, when I go in my car, I have to wash my windows, and you can just see it everywhere. It's and that is going right into your lungs and then gardening all the dust when you're raking. So my lungs have actually been feeling <clears throat> really congested in the spring. Um, so using your diffuser and really making sure that you're taking care of your lungs during this time is going to be really, really important for your, your overall health. And also, it's an immune stimulant, immunostimulant, which means that if you have a compromised immune system, what have we been hearing about? How many people have been worried about their compromised immune system? Why? It's either hereditary or they just don't take care of themselves. Let's be honest. Um, so let's... We all do need to um, be talking about our... I'm echoing a lot. But I, I don't hear it too bad on my end. I think it might just be you. Um, it's not making me want to talk. Um, but since we've all been in quarantine for two months, even if we are super healthy, we have been around the amount of germs and viruses and um, dirt and germs and other for two months. So even the, the most healthy of us, our immune systems are so powerful. So we're going to enter back in in the next couple of months. All the winter is going to be all the time. If it doesn't have a power so is we need to be being now to prepare ourselves for, you know, for the fall. It's going to be much different. Yeah, if you've got headphones, maybe you put your headphones in that might help. Yeah, I might do that. On your end, because I know what it's like to talk into an echo. It's really hard to concentrate 
But I just so you know, we can hear you okay. It's like a little bit of a gap, but it's all right. Um, yeah, it's so true. And also, I'm glad that you brought that up, Molly, because just think about even when we're being conscious and we're going into the store and we're wearing our mask. And if you're, you know, if you're using the same mask over and over and over again, or if you're even outside and you're exercising in the heat of the day with a mask on, or you're in your car by yourself driving, you don't need to do that unless you have a compromised immune system and there's a specific health reason why you're doing it. But please take your masks off unless you're going into a public place that's requiring them because... This is what it's doing is you're actually breathing your own carbon dioxide in and out, in and out, in and out. Your carbon dioxide is your waste, right? You're not getting fresh air. I hear about people who are in cities like New York City. So I've heard of someone who, haven't, who hasn't left their apartment in over 50 days or more. And like, you know, and if you have like central heating or central air, again, you 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 want to make sure you're you're cleaning out your filters, right? Because otherwise, you're just continuing to breathe in the same toxins. It's like being in an airplane and breathing in that recycled air over and over and over again. So, um, make sure you're really allowing yourself to get out, even if it's for a walk in the city. And I know it might not be the freshest of air, but it, it, get inside if you can and try to breathe some fresh air um, or and get and get a filter for your house get an air filter for your house <clears throat> and diffuse oil because oils can actually kill germs so um, like on guard kill germs so that's a blend back in terror as well so moving on with the with the clinical applications so it, it's also used um Okay, so we're talking about the immune system. And when you have compromised immunity, a cold, a flu, a bergamot can be used, uh, blended with clove, frankincense, and ginger. And um, that's a really great immune, immune, uh, immune, immune booster. <laughs> it's also a muscular skeletal, it supports the muscular skeletal system, so which is why we use it in massage. So it can reduce tension. It can soothe pain and tight muscles. Um, it, ha it can also help alleviate restless leg syndrome. Um, and you can consider blending it with basil, lavender, clary sage, marjoram, geranium, um, juniper berry, black pepper, or clove when we're dealing with the muscular muscular skeletal system now when we're talking about dealing with stress and hypertension it's good for soothing anxiety depression and citrus oils are touted for that they are they have uplifting qualities if you watch someone and they peel it if you ask them if they want an orange they're gonna be like oh yeah you know, or you have a citrus smell and they smell it and you open them up and up and you're like, oh, smell this. And the nine times out of ten, they're going to be like, you'll see a smile on their face. It's so cool because it, the nose, remember, is a direct pathway to the brain. So as we smell these aromatic volatile compounds, once we open the bottle, those molecules hit the nasal uh, cavity and move into the olfactory gland, which distributes it right up into the limbic system, which is the most primal part of the brain, which triggers your memory and your mood and emotions. So this is why we say that you can use this to begin to re-pattern the, um, the mind and the subconscious mind, the emotional mind. So um, it's really great to work with affirmations with so our meditation. So when we're talking about um, soothing depression, we can blend this with geranium, rose, patchouli, lavender. Um, those are really nice ones. And um, I think that is all. Oh. On the final note, the last thing I just want to say is that 
on an energetic again an emotional qual uh, the qualities i just want to remind you that it's relaxing restorative and calming yet it's emotionally uplifting it supports the re the release of suppressed emotions big one especially if you like to shove things down friends um and it also helps to reduce insomnia and an anxiety so it's a really amazing oil that we don't really hear about too much bergamot oops some people pronounce it bergamot i think i just chipped my bottle i think i just broke a little piece of glass off there <laughs> i got so excited i'm like throwing it around um okay so with that said i'm gonna hand it over to molly because now she's gonna talk about one of my favorite subjects as we go into yoga and the chakra system and um the energy of it with our stone friends <laughs> okay we can't hear you for some reason i think you have to change your sound settings amazing experience <laughs> i know i swear online i i'm glad it's not just me i feel like every time i get on zoom on lives it's i don't know it's a tech thing well okay because we'll just go right into um, um how we can incorporate bergamot into our meditation practice um, in our meditation practice, and, um, and also a uh, nourishing power chakra system. So, bergamot um, correlates with our um, solar plexus chakra, which is a home of self confidence, personal power, joy. So when we're working to balance that chakra to encourage more feelings of self-confidence, release feelings of judgment, um, bring in more joy, really connect to our personal power. It's a beautiful oil to work with um, during meditation and working with affirmation as well. So, um, first of all, I wanted to just share an affirmation that you can use when working with Virgo. <clears throat> um, usually, I would just drop a. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, usually, I would just drop a one to two drops of bergamot on my hands. Um, after I sit down into my space to meditate. And I'll rub it between my hands and then take a few deep inhalations and um, really set the intention to ground down and to connect. Bergamo specifically um, has the ability to open pathways in our mind and our brain to access higher points of consciousness and also um, facilitates the connection um, with source, with our angels, with our healing team, specific uh, um, Archangel Michael and uh, Archangel Gabriel, so guidance and protection. So when I sit down um, to begin my meditation practice, knowing that um, I am facilitating a connection with Source and my healing team, um, guidance and protection around me. Take a few deep inhalations, and um, this is an affirmation that you can feel comfortable working with. My thoughts amplify my self-confidence and courage. I act fearlessly in the world. I am enthusiastic. 
I take pleasure in complimenting and encouraging others. Joy is a normal part of my My digestive system is healthy. I can easily absorb and process all that goes on around me. Um, and that is really connecting you deeper to your solar plexus, where energetically and emotionally, as we mentioned, self-confidence and personal power and releasing self-sabotage and self-judgment. And in that physical sense, um, it's, the, it's your digestive system. So it's interesting to know when also saying that your affirmation, when your digestive system is healthy, I can easily absorb and process all that goes on around me. So that's really meaning physically and emotionally and spiritually. Um, it's just a bit, it's a bit distracting. I bring up I can't, it's just talking immediately back to me, so I can't really hear. So I might just close it at that, whenever it feels right. Oh, I'm so sorry that you're getting such um, an echo back because I don't hear it on my end. But I just wanted to thank you so much for sharing that because, you know, there's so much deep work that we can do here, um, you know, with these topics that we talked about here, especially when we're dealing with these such core deep issues you know so if anyone listens to this later and has any comments or questions um or has any other interesting ways that we haven't mentioned that they'd love to use bergamot uh please let us know because it's always great to learn from each other so molly thank you so much for hosting and for bringing me on today and yeah and we will see you next month in June where we will, um, my, my alphabetical skills are not up to par. <laughs> I was trying to do these essential oil apothecary classes from A to Z and I missed balance. So next week we're going to talk about one of my absolute favorite oils, which is balance blend, the grounding blend. So if you feel like you've been living up in the ethers or spacey, you don't feel safe or secure or grounded or feel like you have a right to be here in this moment, um, please join us next week. And Molly and I are going to talk all about the amazingness and the benefits of balance. Um, with that said, I just wanted to say um, that I just hope that everyone stays healthy and is working on building their immune system naturally because there is really only one way to ensure our health, and that's by taking responsibility for ourselves and developing a healthy ground from the inside out. And that way we feel bulletproof. You know, we're not living in fear. Um, The mind isn't suffering from depression. The lungs are feeling vibrant. Our immune system is strong. And we really become the radiant beings that we were meant to be. So wishing you all well and sending everyone much love. Namaste. Namaste. Thanks again. Namaste. Namaste.